So a couple of things. We are uploading everything uh, onto the website. If you need to get caught up, if there's something in these messages that is resonating with you, um, some of what we're getting into, well, today is going to be a little bit more theological, just a little front running for y'all. It's going to be a little bit more theological. Is that okay? Yeah. Are you sure? Okay. Are you all shaking your head? Okay. Good. There's some things that we need to understand. Amen. The Holy Spirit gave this to me three weeks ago. I've been chewing on this for three weeks. Amen. And, uh, oh, oh. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. So, um, yeah, uh, this, oh, by the way, you're now able to give online. Amen. Amen. Uh, right. www.faithbiblect.org. You can give online. It takes you about four or five minutes to set up your account. Amen. And uh, the next iteration is we'll go uh, text to give. But your pastor has to catch up with that technology. Okay. It exists. It's there. We can do it probably with the click of a button. Pretty much. It, it It's actually, uh, I haven't, I can I be transparent with you? It's your family. I haven't been checking the online giving because we're not announcing it here. Didn't think anybody was giving online. Yeah, and one of my board members has been tithing for months online. <laughs> 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 Hallelujah. So, and why am I sharing that with you? Because we have people that are, don't call Faith Bible Church their home church, yeah. but they tithe to this ministry. Right. I listen to me. Yeah. Amen. And so that's how four hundred dollars came in towards the door. Frankly. Yeah. <laughs> Amen. Yeah. Praise the Lord. So, um, yeah, that door is ordered. I took a step of faith and put a deposit on the door. It's ordered. They're saying eight to ten weeks. Believe God will be for four. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Praise Amen. the Lord. Uh, and then, of course, a. Uh, whole new host of things are cropping up. There's a series of lights outside this door here uh, that I'm going to replace so that we can start using our handicap ramp because on Fridays we get people that come that are... Yeah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So, now I have buttoned up all of the announcements and you see I did it. <laughs> so, are you ready to get into the Word of God? Are you excited? Yeah. About the word is your expectation yeah. Yeah. in the word, yeah. Amen. in God, Amen. in His Holy Spirit. Way up. somebody say it's way up here. Come on, give me the sign. Give me the sign. There you go. Give me the sign. Way up here. Amen. Praise the Lord. We want to welcome everybody that's joining us online. Amen. Thank you for joining us. It's a privilege to open and break open the word of life and to share the word of God with you. Well, we want to encourage you to come join us here yes. at 28 Chapel Street, beautiful downtown Wallingford, Connecticut. We're here at 1030 on Sunday morning, 7 o'clock on a Friday night for Bible study, 630 on Thursday for prayer. We will love on you. We will make you most welcome. In the interim, as we encourage these fine folks, we're going to encourage you at home, get out your Bibles. B-I-B-L-E. Basic instructions before leaving earth. Amen. The Bible contains the mind of God. And the condition of man. Amen. Hallelujah. And God's plan to get you from where you are to where you should be. Amen. Amen. Jeremiah 29 and 11, your Bible records these words, For I know the plans I have for you, saith the Lord, plans for the hope and the future, plans to prosper you, right. not to harm you. Right. Plans that will bring you or give you a certain end. Amen. Amen. Certain end. Hallelujah. Certain yeah. end. Amen. Amen. And so if you choose to believe that Jesus is the Son of God, that God sent his son 2,000 years ago to the earth. Amen? And you choose to believe that the sacrifice that Jesus performed on the cross was more than enough for all of your sin, all of your sickness, all of your disease, all poverty. If you choose to believe that, if you choose to believe that he died in your place and went to the devil's hell, 
and took your place and paid the penalty in three days that you couldn't pay in an eternity. And if you choose to believe that God raised him from the dead, he became the firstborn amongst the dead, that he might be declared the firstborn amongst the living, that he would be the head, as it were. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And if you choose to believe that not only did God raise him from the dead, but seated him at his right hand, which is what we're going to get into today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You choose to believe that he is coming again. If you say this out loud, that Jesus is the Lord of my life, I surrender my life. Hallelujah. If you choose to. Ah, if you choose to. You see, he sets before you blessing or cursing, and then says, choose life. Choose Jesus. Amen. If you choose to believe, the Bible says you're saved. From what, Pastor? I'm glad you asked. There's judgment coming. Amen. Now, we get little tastes here and there. You know, God will judge sin. So we get little tastes of it as born-again believers here or there. Amen. But this whole earth, this whole universe will be called up before God. And it will be judged. My Bible says in Revelation that all, all the earth, all of hell, Every all, all every, every being, come on, somebody, yeah. will be called up in front of in fr come on in front of God, yeah. and He'll judge it, yeah. and those judgments will be eternal. Yeah. And if you aren't found, if your name is not found in the book of life, if it's not found. If it's not, you're in trouble. You don't make it. Come on, somebody. This is serious. I know. Listen, I know. It's serious. But if you believe the right thing, if you believe that Jesus sinned, no, no, no. Jesus became sin. If you choose to believe that, if you choose to believe that his blood washed you clean, that you are without, come on, without spot, no, spot, spotless, without, without wrinkle, holy, that is who you are now. Conditionally. Positionally. It's who you are now. If you believe what you believe matters. Oh, let me say that again. It's coming out of me with a force. What you believe matters. I just saw a pastor friend of mine that shared this. 84% of the the United States, I believe it was. Uh, believes that there is a God. Amen. Right? They, they believe that they are Christians. Yeah. Let me help you. They believe that they are Christians. Yeah. yeah. But only 9% have a biblical worldview. Yeah. What you believe matters. Wow. If you choose to believe the word of God, you believe the right thing. Yeah. It is his holy anointed mm -hmm. right. written word yeah. that Jesus shed his blood for yeah. so that every jot and every tittle yeah. would come to pass. Right. And the Bible says, somebody say the Bible. The Bible, Bible. The Bible says grass withers, flowers fade, yeah. but the word but the of word. God stands forever. Yeah. Yeah. Right? So when somebody who has a worldly worldview, an unbiblical worldview, steps to you and says, are you insane? Do you really believe there was a flood? Are you insane there was a boat? And all the animals got up? Are you insane that some guy died 2,000 years ago? And because he died, you're okay? Are you insane? You say, yes, I'm completely out of my mind and totally in the spirit. 
Are you listening to me? Hallelujah. Glory to God. The word of God is so important that Jesus died for it. He shed his blood for it. Every word. Amen. So we started a new series. Vision of victory. We could actually go home right now. Because you've got all the vision you need. You are a born again child of God. Amen. Amen. Your end is certain. Yes. Right? But as you're going through this thing we call life, you're going to encounter challenges. Yeah. You're going to encounter problems. You're going to encounter difficulties. Gone. It's a fallen earth. People ask me often. I said, they ask me often. Well, Pastor, how come there's if there's if there's a God, how come, how come there's so much bad in the world? Why why is there so much terrible? In the world? Because people choose to be ungodly. Right. Mm -hmm. People do ungodly things. Yep. Yeah. Rape is ungodly. Yes. Murder is ungodly. Come on, somebody. Yeah. It's ungodly. It's not of God. Right. He doesn't ordain it. Amen. <laughs> Are you listening to me? Yep. Can he redeem it? He yep. can. Yep. There's nothing that the devil can cook up down here and put on humankind. That God hasn't already yeah. dealt with from the foundation of the earth. Amen. God is not up in heaven this morning going, oh, didn't see that happening. Yeah. Hey, hey, Jesus, did you see what's going on in Afghanistan? Yeah. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. What are we going to do? He is not panicked. Right. <laughs> Come on. Yeah. He is not panicked. Right. What's going on in Pakistan? What's going on in India? What's with this COVID? There is an evil devil out there. There is. Are you listening to me? Yep. Yep. And his sole mission, his sole purpose is stealing, killing, and destroying. Well, what about all these hurricanes that are happening? If it's stealing, if it's killing, if it's destroying, it's not God. Well, well there, how come God allows it to happen? Well, the amount of sin that's going on in the earth today. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. The Bible says that the earth has been groaning and travailing yeah. since the curse entered into right. the earth at the fall right. of Adam right. in the garden. And Jesus himself said, that, you know, his disciples were very concerned. They were actually, they were more concerned about when Jesus was going to set up his kingdom. Because they, they wanted to rule and reign with him here and here. They were waiting for him to drive out the Romans and get rid of all those Jewish leaders that have been taxing them out of existence. I find it interesting that taxes seems to be the root of all evil. Yeah. <laughs> right? Uh, that, that they were just like, okay, so when are, you, when are you driving the Romans out? When are you driving those Jewish leaders out so that, come on. Somebody say Jesus said. Jesus. Jesus said. He said, in the end, you will see wars, rumors of wars, famines, pestilence, floods, earthquakes, yep. all increase. Somebody yeah. say increase. increase. I, I'm going to say to you right now, in number and in severity, yep. <laughs> you will see an increase right. like a woman in labor, right. getting ready to give birth. Yep. Somebody asked me, we were having dinner, was the last time we were talking about this at dinner? Somebody asked me if I believed in global warming. I said, no, I believe in global melting. <laughs> Everything down here is going to melt with a fervent heat. Everything. Are you listening to me this morning? Amen. Don't get so hung up on the things in the earth. It's all going to It's all going to go. Yep. 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 Uh, hallelujah. You go, oh, Pastor, that's kind of doom and gloom for a Sunday morning. No, it's not, because if you believe the right thing, it's right. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. what you believe matters. Right. That's true. I say what you believe matters. Right. So we started talking to you about having a vision of victory, and we said this to you already. We'll do a little review. Is that all right? Right? That where the revelation of God, where the revelation from the Word of God is missing, people throw off restraint. They'll run wild, one translation says. Yes. When people don't pay attention to biblical principles, help me preach this morning. Yes. When people will not uh, apply 
biblical doctrine, they throw her off restraint. They'll do whatever comes to their mind. Right. And if that means raping little children, you want to know why there's evil in the world? Because people yield to the wrong influence. Right. Right. People do the wrong things. Well, listen to me, church. You're designed. You're intended. You are purposed by God. In most cases, to walk above it. No, no, no. In all cases, to walk above it. You're never to sink to the level of it. Your job is redemption. Amen. Oh, help me preach. What? I thought Jesus was the Redeemer. That's right, he is. He is the Redeemer. But then he tells us in Romans that it is your job to enforce the kingdom of God in righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. 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 Righteousness, peace, joy in the Holy Ghost. Righteousness, peace, joy in the Holy Ghost. Righteousness. Are you the righteousness of God yes. in Christ? Yes. Is that a positional truth? Yes. And is it a conditional truth? You have God's righteous nature now on the inside of you. That is your current present condition. It means that you can do righteous works. Yeah. Well, what's a righteous work? Well, just like Jesus did. Amen. When, when Jesus was here on the Amen. earth, you're supposed to be little Jesuses. Christian. Little Christ. You didn't know that's what Christian, that's what, that's what it means. Yeah. Little Christ. Amen. What? I can't be like Jesus. He's a, be imitators of God, little children. Hallelujah. Is that what your Bible says? Yeah. Well, then it's time for us to start imitating the shepherd. It's time for us to start imitating our Heavenly Father yeah. in whose image we've been created in. Hallelujah. I didn't tell you that everything was going to pop up petunias and uh, pop up yeah, petunias and turn up tulips. Well, I didn't say it was all going to be sunshine and rainbows with unicorns at the end. Your adversary is going to see to it that hard times will come. And then when you get caught up in the hard time, your emotions will follow suit. It, it, it tells me when I hear Christians, uh, when they begin to struggle, and listen, everybody begins to struggle. Because everybody, for at least a certain period of time, will look at the wrong thing. They'll look at the natural circumstance. They'll go to the barometer of their feelings to determine if I'm in faith. I can't tell you the number over the years, the number of Christians I heard. I just don't feel like I have faith. Well, that's good. Because faith is not a feeling. Right. <laughs> Come on. Faith is not a feeling. Faith is an action. What? Yet faith is an action. So when the circumstance comes, when the challenge comes, when the hard time comes, what is your action? What is your response? If the word of God, the anointed word of God, is your action, now you're putting hustle behind the muscle. Amen. And when you put God's word on your lips, according to Ephesians chapter 6, the Bible says it becomes a sword. Yes. So, yeah. I'm just going to parenthetically insert, maybe too many Christians got their swords in their shield. Yeah. And they're not taking out. They right. just don't feel like they have anything. <laughs> now listen, this might be you today. <laughs> just look straight ahead. This might be you today. I've got some good Bible news for you this morning. You can change it in yeah. a yeah. moment. Amen. Yeah. Hallelujah. You just make... A decision. Yeah. Come on, somebody. Yeah. Who am I preaching to? You make a decision. You can either look at the circumstance and say, oh, we're going to get swallowed up in this bad boy. Or you can take out the sword of the word of God and you can put the word of God on your lips. Right. Ha! Be like preaching. <laughs> Do you remember Moses? Come on. Here he is. He knows that he's called of God to be the deliverer for Israel. And he leads, as some theologians will teach us, between a million and a million two. That's the number of people that he is currently leading out of Egypt. Right? And he gets to the, to the uh, Nile uh, River, the Red Sea. He gets there. Is the sea real? 
So I gotta talk to you for a minute. I didn't say deny the circumstance. There's preachers out there that talk about that. I didn't say deny the circumstance, deny its power. Right. Who am I talking to? Yeah. It could be a real, it should be. Listen, if you're making up circumstances, right. there's a whole other subject for you. <laughs> a real problem. Right. It exists. Yeah. Right. If you ignore real problems, they can kill you. Yes. You ignore symptoms. Come on. Yeah. They can kill you. Left unattended and ignored. When listen, when the devil comes with anything, go oh, get this. You're taking notes, write it down. Type it in the chat. When the devil comes with anything, it is your job to resist him. Yes. Steadfast in faith. You ignore a symptom, you could die. You challenge its right to your body. How dare you come? Who do you think you are? Hallelujah. Glory to God. Now, I'll pull the covers off of me. You ready? Because I can do it now. Right? There's been a lot of heat and pressure at work. Anybody else ever encounter heat and pressure at work? No. Yeah, where everything seems like it's gone wrong. And once it gets wrong, it catches on fire. And then after it catches on fire, somebody pours gas on it. And after they pour gas on it, they put napalm on it. And I just sit there going, well, well, the last two weeks on the job, that's what it's been like. It's been, it's not been, it's been one fire after, and, and they just kind of all finally just, you look one morning and you go, okay, the whole earth is on fire. I got my little squirt gun. <laughs> well, well. This is what you feel like. Come on. Every time my phone rang, I go, oh. Every time I heard the playing of the computer, there's another email. Oh. Who am I talking to? Yeah, come on. I started getting symptoms in my body, and they were alarming. They were alarming. The only one who knew about it was my wife. Are you listening to me? And then I went to the doctors. You don't ignore symptoms. Yeah. You challenge their right. right. The report from the doctor was, no, you're as healthy as a horse. Amen. Amen. There's, no, there's, nothing, there's nothing wrong. Yes. Right? Oh, yeah, I'm like, okay. He says, tell them what it was. I was getting palpitations. But listen, any of you ever had a heart palpitation? Yeah. Right? Did you ever have them last all day long? No. Into the night? Did you ever try going to sleep at night and your heart's going? <laughs> okay? It'll get your attention. Yeah. <laughs> so it'll get your attention. Yeah. Now, you can't threaten a Christian with thoughts of heaven. Yeah. <laughs> so I wasn't too concerned about that. And right. The life insurance policy is like, this. So, you see her, you know. <laughs> you, don't know you don't know why. Right? right? But listen. 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 Real. Circumstances. Challenges. Difficulties. Real. Re real. So here's Moses. Standing there at the Red Sea. Right. Can't go forward. Pharaoh's army's bearing down on him. Not looking good. And actually at one point in the scripture you hear. Where God, God says to Moses. Why, why, why for you criest thou to me? Yeah. In other words what are you complaining to me for about it? Yeah exactly. What do you got in your hand? Oh, I got my staff. Extend it. Right. Now the staff here is, you know, listen, Psalm 23, your rod and your staff. So it's a type and shadow of the word of God. Yeah. What are you supposed to do? You're supposed to extend what's in your hand. Yeah. The sword of the spirit. Yeah. The word of God yeah. towards the circumstance. And you know what God did? Do you know what he did? Moses woke up the next day and the whole Red Sea was gone and the whole Egyptian army had been buried in the sand. They were gone. No, that's not what he did, did he? 
Come on. Yeah. Come on. Come on. I need you to think here this morning. What did he do? He opened it up and made a way through. Yeah. This is who your God is. Yeah. We're busy trying to climb a mountain that God said, if you'll just extend my holy anointed word towards you, I will see to it that there is a way through the middle of it. Yes. Corinthians backs us up and says, no temptation. So I say no temptation. No temptation. Has seized you. So you're not special. Oh, this is a special problem. It's just I'm the only one ever. Who's ever encountered anything like this ever, 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 ever? I'm the only one. Because I'm the only one. <laughs> That's how the adversary does everybody. You're the only one that's experiencing this now. You're the only one that's had this problem happen. You're the only one. This is a special problem just. Except the word says, no temptation has seized you except right. that which is common. Right. What does that mean? It, and it goes on and it bears this out. There's lots of people, <coughs> brothers and sisters right. and the family, all over the earth yep. that are going through the same problem, right. same yep. challenge, same, yeah. same, same, somebody say same thing. Same, same thing. thing. Right? So here's what I do. Okay? It's nowhere in my notes. So here's what I do. When these types of things come at me, I begin to find people to strengthen and encourage. Amen. Why? Yeah. I'm sowing seeds oh, towards now. Yeah. I'm sowing seeds yeah. towards my own deliverance. Yes. Yeah. Are you listening to me? Yeah. So there were several of my co-workers that I knew that were going through challenges. So I began to send them scriptures. Christian, not Christian, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> Doesn't matter. Hallelujah. Listen, you want to get through this? Yeah. You want to put the fire out? Yeah. Yeah. I've got the solution. What am I giving them? I'm giving them a vision of victory. Just like we're giving you this morning. It is time for you to lift up your eyes from the circumstance. We saw last time we were together in Genesis 15, I believe it was, that here's Abram in his tent. The natural circumstance had covered him. He's not able to have kids. He's barren. His wife is barren. He's got problems with his relative that he doesn't like very much is going to inherit all of his stuff. <laughs> Are you listening to me? And God takes him out of the tent. See, we overlook this in Scripture. He was covered by a natural circumstance called a tent. Your adversary, his uh, primary MO, do you know what I mean by that? His modus operandi, the way he functions, is to cover you. Right. His primary purpose when he was created was to cover the throne of God with praise. Right. Are you listening to me? So his very nature, at his very created essence, he is a covering being. Mm. And so he tries to cover you with circumstance. And he tries to cover you with doubt. And he tries to cover you with unbelief. And the Bible says it like this, that the God of this world, who Satan is, little g, he is the God of this world. Because Adam committed treason. But Jesus defeated him. And so I was admonished by the Holy Spirit. You never make mention of his name without putting the word defeated in front of it. So defeated Satan still has a covering nature. And he has a blinding nature. What does that mean? It means that he does things that you don't see. Are you listening to me? He does things so that you don't see. He blinds you. Right? So God takes Abram outside the tent and says, look up. And that's what's burning in my spirit this morning. Look up. Amen. Look up. Yeah. Satan will always try to get you to do this. Focus on the problem. Focus on the circumstance. Oh, focus on yourself and your inadequacies. You're not big enough or strong enough. You can't handle this. Who do you think you are, you worthless worm? <laughs> You've made a mistake. I'm looking up. Amen. Amen. And you want to know who I am? 
I am a born again, spirit filled, blood bought, Bible walking, scripture quoting, Satan bashing, sin trashing, water walking warrior of the Lord Jesus Christ. You have made a huge mistake. There is more enough in me and with me than there is in you. I let the greater one lives on the inside. I am a success going somewhere to happen. I can't help but be a success. If you made a mistake, you ask me who I am. Most, most Christians that don't have a biblical worldview, you know, the 9% we were just talking about, I'm just a worthless person. Oh, no. just not going to make it. Just a little ashy peer down on the planet. A little chunk of undignified dirt. That's me. <laughs> you go... Two more chapters. I'm just going to preach out of my spirit this morning. <laughs> Amen. Yeah. Woo! Yeah. Go ahead. Right. It gets us so focused on natural things that we, we forget about the supernatural thing. It is. It's two more chapters. Right? The Bible says in Corinthians that you're not to walk by sight. That's right. You're not to walk by what you see. Right. You're not to walk by how you feel. The Bible says you walk by faith. That's right. Listen, faith will make you strut. Yeah. Are you listening to me? That faith changes the way you walk. It's not arrogant. It's not prideful. It's confident in God that God of the Bible will do what He said He'll do in His Word. He's not a man that He should lie. Oh, and just in case I have forgotten, this is what we're getting into the theolo theology of today, right? In Genesis 15, you see that God takes Abram outside of the tent and shows him. He says, look at all the stars in the sky. He said, if you were able, your descendants will be more numerous than them. Right. Look at all the grains of sand on the seashore. Your descendants will be greater than all of them. Now, if you understand the law of double interpretation, or if you understand the types and shadows of the Bible in the Old Testament, you know, the Bible is progressive light, right? As you move through the Bible, you get more and more light. Yeah. Thanks for that one yeah and those two head shakes. As you move through the Bible, it's progressive revelation. You get the more light you walk in, the more light you get. The more light you walk in, the more light you get. It's a progressive revelation. And what he was saying to Abram was this. Those stars are your spiritual descendants. You see, they're spiritual beings. That's right. And the sand is your natural descendants. Right. You know, yeah. the whole nation of Israel. Right. Thank you, Jesus. It's so important that you know this. Because the Bible says then that God says, well, you know, Abram. He's a typical man. So I like about him. He says, well, how do I know this is going to come to pass? That's a pretty fair question. I listened to you when I was over there with all those fire worshipers and snake eaters and the Ur of the Chaldees, right? And you said, get up from here and go. So what did I do? I got up and I went. Okay? But how do I know that I'm going to have all these descendants? Spiritually speaking, naturally, God says, I'll make a covenant. Right. Amen. So he says, go get me a bull, goat, sheep, birds, split them all in half. Makes a covenant. Wait a minute. I can make a covenant with Abraham, but you're a man. You could lie. You could go back on your word. So the Bible says that Abram fell into a deep sleep and horrors came upon him. But then he saw a smoking oven. And a lampstand. Somebody say smoking oven. Smoking oven. Lampstand. Lampstand. Thank you for your enthusiasm. Smoking oven. Smoking oven. Lampstand. 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 God likes to appear in the Old Testament as smoking and burning. I don't know why. Part of it is, you know, his holy nature, when it comes in contact with sin, something's got to smoke. Yeah. Right? Yep. The Bible says that when God showed up on Sinai to give, to give the law to the Jews, right, they were all supposed to go up on Sinai, but when he showed up, all of Sinai, the whole mountain was smoking. Why? Because God's presence was on it. 
There's something about the presence of God that will burden sin on your life. Yes. Yes. I mean, even this morning, yes. burden, I mean, burden yes. sin right out of yes. your life. Yes. Yes. Ha Hallelujah. You, so here you have this smoking oven. I'm like, what's the lampstand? I'm glad you asked. The lampstand is Jesus. Yes. It's a type and shadow. God and Jesus make a covenant for man. You see, God can't make the covenant with man because man could lie. But my son, who's, come on, got my blood running in his veins. Come on, come on. He won't lie. I won't lie. I've made a covenant with my son. And then you get up into Genesis 17. Several years has passed. And he still doesn't have a boy. <laughs> right? So Abram's got some, listen, he's got some time on his hands. That's why I say to you, don't bow to the pressure of time. Right? Right? You're in a battle. Right. I said if you're in a battle, yep. time isn't the issue. That's right. Yep. The only question is victory. Right. Who's going to get it? Right. What Satan is counting on is that through time, you'll quit. Yeah. You'll give up. You'll say either it's too hard, it's been too long, so I will drop the shield of faith. I will put down the sword of the Spirit. And just say, you know what? This must be my lot in life. God just must want me to suffer like this. This sickness, this disease, mm -hmm. right? This horrible relationship. Come on, somebody. Yeah. Poverty. Yeah, that's the way I'm just supposed to be poor my whole life. You know, my mom was poor, my dad was poor, and my grandma was poor. My... Mm -hmm. <laughs> Come on. I know. I know that's why we're teaching along these lines. That is not who you are called to be. God made a covenant with Abram that didn't include Abram. It was for him. You well, Pastor, why am I so excited about Abram? Well, because you're his spiritual descendant. That's, that's Jesus came to the earth. And translated you not only out of darkness Amen. into the kingdom of light, Amen. but now you are heirs along with Abraham's seed. Amen. You're his spiritual descendant. Thank you, Lord. Are you listening to me? And if you read what God said to Abram, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to make you exceedingly great. Amen. Your name will be great. Amen. So when you think of Rockefeller, what do you think of? <laughs> do you think of wealth? Do you think of success? Do you, come, come on. Did you know that he was a Baptist? Maybe he got a hold of this. Yeah. That God will make his name great. When you think of Carnegie, well, what do you think of? When you hear George Washington Carver, what do you say? He would get up every morning, had 300 different uses for the peanut. The peanut. He was a Christian. And he would get up and ask God to reveal to him the secrets. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> I yep. know that. No, that's it. <laughs> well, if he'll do it for George Washington Carver, if he'll do it for Rockefeller, if he'll do it for Carnegie, if he'll do it for Abram, wouldn't he do it for you? But there's some things about you that God is going to have to change. Yeah. Yeah. What? I thought God liked me just the way I am. He loves you so much he refuses to leave you that way. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Are you listening to me? Yeah. I said his love for you is so great that he refuses to leave you in the condition right. that he binds you in. Right. Right. He wants you to be part of the covenant. It's not enough just to get born again. Right. It's not enough just to get spirit filled. Right. The love of those are great. Wonderful. As a matter of fact, it will change the trajectory of your life. But if you're not experiencing it in your life, listen to me, right now, Amen. then you have to ask yourself what's wrong with moving. Right. And then go do something. Right. 
right. about it. Because right. God's already done everything that he's going to do. Right. How do I know this? He sent his son Jesus. I'm getting ahead of myself, but I'm getting yeah. happy. And right. Jesus came and Jesus lived the perfect life and Jesus performed yeah. the perfect sacrifice and Jesus went and paid the penalty for you and him and God raised him from the dead. And you know what Jesus did? Sat down at the right hand of the Father. Until the whole earth is his footstool. So, God the Father has done everything he's going to do for you. Jesus has poured out his whole life for us, the church, including his blood. And is now seated at the right hand of the Father in the seat of authority. And by the power of the Holy Spirit, you have been seated in the same yes. place. Yes. Amen. You need to get a vision of victory. Yes. When you're sitting in the seat of authority right. in the whole universe, Amen. listen to me, church. Look left. Right. <laughs> in just a minute, it'll sink in. Look left. If Jesus has been seated at the right hand of the Father, yeah. look left. Right. Amen. Who's sitting next to you? God the Father Amen. is sitting next to you. Amen. We, go, we go for a run ride. Right? We do a little pew walking right now. Just enough for everybody. Yeah. So, in Genesis 17, time has passed. Abram's got some problems on his hand. He still doesn't have any kids. He's 99 years old in Genesis 17. Somebody say 99. 99. And Abram, he says to God, uh, God says to him, I am almighty God, walk before me and be blameless. And I'll make my covenant between me and you, and I will multiply you exceedingly. Amen. You know what? I've heard that before. I've, heard, I've, I've read that in the Bible some. I've heard that before. I've read that. He said that before. I've seen it before. I've seen that. I've seen it. I've seen it. I've seen it in the Bible. I've seen it in there. Yeah. You wish that Abram was this man of great faith and power. Abram fell out of his face with God talking. He says, as for me, behold, my covenant is with you, and you shall be a father of many nations. Amen. No longer. No longer. Right. Shall, no longer. Right. Somebody tore up that cushion. No longer. Shall your name be Abram? But your name shall be Abraham, the father of many nations. So what does God do? First he changes his vision, and then he changes his name. Some of you are drug addicts. And he changed your name. Yeah, yeah. Some of you were a loser. And he changed. Yeah, your, amen. Some amen. of you were divorced. Yeah. And he changed. Yet some of you were a failure. And he changed. Yeah. Your, he changed yeah. your name. Yeah. He, cha he changed your name. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Some of you were poor, sick. And he changed your name yeah. Yeah. to heal. Amen. To bless. Hallelujah. He changed your name from loser to success. Yes. He changed your name from drug addict, hallelujah, to redeemed. Yes. Oh, no, he changed all of you. Come on, somebody. He changed all of you. You were all lost and dying and going to a devil's hell. And he said, no, not you. You're mine. I changed your name. You are now redeemed. You're a child of the living God. I changed your nature because you couldn't do it yourself. So I have made you the righteousness of God in Christ. You are not only seated at my right hand. That's your position. But your condition 
it is that you are now righteous. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Right. Yeah. You're righteous Amen. right now. You can't get any more holified Amen. than you are right now. When God looks at you, he looks at you through the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. It's without spot. It's without wrinkle. It is holy. It is blameless. That's how your father looks at you. He changed your name to redeem. He made a covenant with his son, Jesus. That in the fullness of time, Jesus would come to you. Woo! Glory to God. And here we are getting caught up in natural circumstances. Natural feelings. Did you ever see Jesus do that anywhere? In Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John? Walk into any circumstance and go, Ooh, Oh, that's messed up. <laughs> you know what? You've got a real problem on your hands. <laughs> yeah, you know what? Let's get some of the disciples over there. Listen. Yeah. I'd like to... I'd like to yeah, thank you, Holy Ghost. I don't have the scripture reference, but it is uh, in the gospel account where... Uh, Jesus' disciples tried casting a deaf, dumb yep. uh, spirit out yep. of a little boy, yep. and they couldn't do it. Do you remember that? Yeah. Right. And this is this is where the church is yep. finding itself today. Right. Right. Because here's what happens: the father comes to Jesus and says, "Hey, your your disciples couldn't cast right. that devil out. Can you do it?" <laughs> The church is focusing on people. Yeah. They're yeah. focusing on disciples yeah, of God. I'm listen. I'm talking about men yeah. and women of God, right? And right. somebody doesn't get healed, so he doesn't. Well, right. you know, I, the best of the best have prayed for me. The best of the best have laid their hands on me, and I didn't get any. I'm yeah. I'm yeah, I didn't get healed. Yeah. Right. You're focusing on the wrong thing. You need to be focusing on Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. He is the healer. Right. Amen. I was a friend of mine. This was years ago. Uh, he had a stroke. And uh, uh, there was a name evangelist coming to another state, and this guy has a worldwide healing ministry. And the effects of the stroke were that his left side was all right, his left side right, whatever it was, was all messed up. Couldn't walk right, couldn't move his arm right, a little slurred in his feet, all those things. Got on a plane and flew to Tennessee so that he could get under that anointing and get close to the man of God. Okay. Asked if I would pick him up there for him. When he's coming back. So my expectation is way up here. Yeah. Right? He gets off the plane. Comes walking up to me, looks at me, and says, I got nothing. You'll have what you say. Right. Taught me a couple of lessons. Don't ever go chasing the anointing. Well. There's more than enough anointing in the anointed, holy written word of God. Yeah. To get everybody healed, everybody sick, there's more than enough. Yeah. Now, I'm for going to conferences, and you know, and I've done it. What I'm talking about now is chasing the healing anointing because that individual, and then goes, uh, I got nothing. And it taught me stop focusing on people. Right. Because God's anointing is God's anointing, yeah. and it's the anointing. That breaks and destroys yokes. Right. Not people. Right. Why are you listening to me? Yeah. Oh, go to Hebrews. I'm getting ready to close. I've only got four more scriptures. God changed his name. And he changed your name. God is a God of covenant. He is a covenant keeping God. He said, I am not a man that I should lie. Aren't you glad that God has never lied? Yeah. Amen. If he told one lie, then your whole salvation, my whole salvation, is nothing. Yeah. He is unjust and untrue. Aren't you glad that God has never lied? Never lied. When he speaks, truth is the result. Right. Come on, church. Yeah. When he speaks, truth is the result. Yeah. So does the word say... By his stripes. Yes, yes. Does the word say he sent his word to heal and to the is that what the Bible says? Did the Bible say forget not all of his benefits? Yes. Who 
Heals. Forgives all of your iniquities and heals all. Listen, if the Bible says all, does that include everything? Yes. Yeah, it does, doesn't it? Yeah, Are you in covenant with God? Yes. God made a covenant with his son. You get to be the beneficiary. What did you have to do? Just accept it. You didn't have to work your way in. You didn't have to pay your way in. I don't know about you. I couldn't clean up before I came to the kingdom. He saw me broken, bleeding on the side of the road. Guns, drugs, and alcohol. Ripping and running, being a fool, doing all that stupid stuff. And Jesus said, not you. Jesus said, here, let me, let me put you in my house. See, I'm going to bring you to the inn. I'm going to bring you to my house. I'm going to get you around people that will love on you. Come on, this is the church. I'm going to get you around people that will love on you and love you into the kingdom. Hallelujah. Thank you. You see, the education system, they tried to educate the hell out of me. <laughs> and, and the judicial system, well, they, they tried to jail the hell out of me. Lord knows my parents tried to beat the hell out of me. <laughs> but Jesus, he just loved the hell out of me. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Shout out to Mark Hankins. I love that. That's one of my favorite. <laughs> my parents tried to beat the hell out of me. Jesus, he just loved the hell out of me. He loved me. He saw the condition that I was in. He refused to leave me. And what he took me outside of the tent. Took me and showed me a vision yeah, of victory. You can be a success. You can go and there is nothing that you cannot accomplish. That's right. right? As long as you're lining up with the will of God. Yeah, Are you listening to me? Because, you know, now you have these high school guidance instructors and counselors. And stuff. You can be anything you want to be. Just whatever you want to be, you can go be. Well, that's not true. No. I will never play in the NBA. Never, ever, 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 ever. I'm just not going to. I'm never going to play in the NFL. Never, ever, 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 ever. Even back in high school. Right? 155 pounds soaking wet. What's that? Five foot nothing, a hundred nothing, with not one speck of uh, athletic ability. Are you listening to me? There is gifts, skills, talents, and abilities that God has put on the inside of you. That's what you're supposed to be. <laughs> they used to interview with me when I was the vice president of sales of a company. Yes, I've got my degrees in ancient Sanskrit and early French history. And now you want a sales position. <laughs> Can you tell me why? Well, my high school guidance counselor said I should follow my dreams and whatever I'm passionate about. So I was passionate about French history. Did they tell you to get a job in French history? Well, no. <laughs> <laughs> Why was it like a sales job? Well, I think I can talk to people. <laughs> get out. <laughs> <laughs> Holy to God. Oh, oh, you have gifts, you have skills, you have talent, you have ability that God has placed in you. Amen. Well, Pastor, I don't know what I'm called to do. Let me ask you a question. What are you good at? Let's start there. What, what is it that you do that other people struggle with? Yeah. I, I, I'm big picture. I take a broad brush. Right? Makes me good, makes me bad. If I want paperwork filled out, <laughs> yep. every I is dotted, every T is crossed, it is neat, it is clean, people can read it. <laughs> Are you listening to me? It's her gift. It's her skill. It's her talent. It's her ability. Right? And so, as, as her husband then, why would I try to do something I'm not good at? The converse of that is, if I want the lawn mowed just right, <laughs> right? If, if I, if, oh, let me help you. If I want a plant to grow, if I want a plant to be watered, not the place to go. Nice. <laughs> 
<laughs> loves planting them. But the plants all have a little sign on it that says, Dr. Kevorkian is here. <laughs> I, I came home one day and one of them had jumped out of the pot and hopped its way over to the hose and turned the hose on. Like, <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. Are you there in Hebrews? God will change your name. And he has changed your name to redeem Amen. to the righteousness of God Amen. in Christ. Amen. Hebrews 8, 6 then becomes the foundation of having a vision of victory. But now Jesus has taken on a new and improved priestly ministry in that respect. He has been made the mediator of a better covenant established on yeah. better promises. Mm -hmm. yeah. Remember, if the first covenant had been able to reconcile everyone to God, there'd be no reason for a second one. Right. Amen? So Jesus came and he fulfilled all of the law. Right. He did not abolish the law. Right. He fulfilled it. Fulfilled. Right. And that's why you have an old covenant, right. Old Testament, right. and a new Testament. Right. Amen? So this New Testament, this new covenant, Amen. has got better promises. Hallelujah. Right. Glory to God. And it's better because we have a better mediator. Right, yeah. Thank you, my Lord. Hebrews 9.13 says, Under the old covenant, the blood of bulls and goats and the ashes of a heifer were sprinkled on those who were defiled, and it effectively cleansed them outwardly of their ceremonial impurities. So, bull's blood and goat's blood and ashes, they could cleanse in the Old Testament. Well, let's just say it like this, to a degree. Yeah. How do I know it's to a degree? Because every year, they had to come back. Right. Yet how much more? <laughs> the sacred blood of the Messiah thoroughly cleanse our conscience, conscience that consciences for by the power of the eternal spirit, he offered himself to God as the perfect sacrifice that now frees us from our dead works Amen. to worship and to serve Amen. the living Amen. God. Amen. The blood of the Lord Jesus Christ does not just ceremonially cleanse you for a year. The blood of the Lord Jesus Christ cleanses you to such a degree it's as if you had never seen it. So Jesus, verse 15 says, in Hebrews 9, the one who has enacted a new covenant with a new relationship with God so that those who accept the invitation, somebody say, I've accepted it. I've accepted it. Will receive the inter eternal inheritance he has promised to his heirs, Amen. for he died to release us from the guilt of the violations committed under the yeah. first covenant. So Jesus' blood, hallelujah, cleanses you from, from all sin. All unrighteousness. His blood so cleanses you and even purges your conscience of dead right. works. And makes you the righteousness of God in Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. So you too have fulfilled the old covenant. Right. Amen. Amen. Selah. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Verse 16. Now a person's last will and testament can only take effect after one has proven to have died. Did Jesus die? He did. Okay. Otherwise, the will cannot be enforced while the person who made it is still alive. So this is why not even the first covenant was inaugurated without the blood of animals. For Moses ratified the covenant after he gave the people all the commandment of the law. He took the blood of calves and goats and water and scarlet wool and hyssop, and he sprinkled the people and the book, and he said, the blood of the covenant that God commands you to keep, and later Moses also sprinkled the tabernacle with the blood and every utensil and item used in the service of worship. Hallelujah. Actually, everything under the law was purified by blood since forgiveness only comes through the outpouring of blood. Right. And wow, Pastor, that's an awful lot of blood. Yeah, it's a bloody covenant. It costs someone his life. In the old covenant, it costs something. Bulls, goats, sheep, right. herds. Mm -hmm. Right? And it was for ceremonial. Right. It would cleanse you. Come on. 
outwardly, right. it would make you worthy to, to serve. Right. But God doesn't want servants. No, he wants children. Amen. He wants family. He wanted yeah. all of Israel to come up Sinai, but they refused. Yeah. They said to Moses, you go. <laughs> so Moses went. And Moses had an encounter with the living God that changed him forever. Yeah. The Bible says that when Moses came down out of the mountain, there was lightning coming off of his face like as he had right. been in the presence of God. Well, have you been in the presence of God this morning? Yeah. yeah. Well, then lightning should be coming off your face. Yeah. Your countenance should be changed. Yeah. Yeah. I say your countenance should be changed. Yeah. You might come into church. Oh, 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 oh. But you should be leaving church going, oh, happy day. Yeah, yeah. You got week, I'm ready for you. <laughs> Monday, what you got? Yeah. Ah, Tuesday, watch out, I'm coming. Yes. <laughs> I'm not coming alone either. I got the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, and legion upon legion upon legion of angels are behind me. Yes. Woo! Oh, Wednesday's in trouble! Yes. <laughs> How much more the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ cleanse you? The voice translation says here in Hebrews 9, uh, in verse 23, without the shedding of blood, sin cannot be forgiven. And so it was necessary for all the earthly symbol, symbols of the heavenly realities to be purified with these animal sacrifices. But the heavenly things themselves required a superior sacrifice than these. Just in case you're wondering, we said to you that in the beginning of this series that we're focusing too much on natural things and natural circumstances and that natural circumstances are subject to change but when you're walking by faith there's a more permanent nature to faith the things you cannot see are more real and more permanent than the things you can't see and so when you read your old testament you see where moses is making the tabernacle in the wilderness have you ever read about that <laughs> right you got the outer court and you got the inner court, and you got the holy place, and you got the holy of holies where the presence of God was kept. It is but a type and shadow of the actual. The actual holy of holies in heaven. And bull's blood and goat's blood and sheep's blood, they might cut it here on the earth. But there's only one blood that is allowed into the presence of God. It's his own. So he saw to it that his son had his blood. Because the father determines blood type. Come on. Amen. So Jesus, hallelujah, after dying on a cross... Going into the devil's hell. Somebody asked, where's the blood of Jesus now? I'm glad you asked. I don't know how this happened, but all of it was collected. And Jesus himself walked into the presence of God. It's about to get awesome in here. His awe is about to fill this room. You better get ready. Jesus walks into the presence of God as a man. But he's got his eternal blood. You can't go into God's presence in your natural body. Your spirit will come right out. Are you listening? Your body will fall down. Why? Because your body's got sin in it. Right. The, the, you got sin all the way through. Are you listening right. to me? Mm -hmm. right. But your spirit doesn't. Right. Now I want you to stay. It's, 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 this, is, this is a little deep, but you can take it. Mm -hmm. Jesus walks into the presence of God bearing the marks of a previous life. Mm -hmm. He's bearing the marks of the yeah. cross. Mm -hmm. You see, all of your past yeah. All, come, all of it, yeah. everything you are, 
comes into the presence of God, and if you'll allow God to deal with it. Yeah. Yeah. If you'll allow him to deal with the molestation, if you'll allow him to deal with the rape, if you'll allow him to deal with the addiction, if you'll allow him to deal with it, you can bear the marks of a previous life and be accepted by him because of the blood. Jesus walked into the presence of God And bought in his blood and put it on the mercy seat. Yeah. Because the tabernacle here was just a type and shadow of what's actually in heaven. Yeah. And through his shed blood, Jesus gained access to the Father. Mm, God. Yeah. So that we can go into his presence. Listen to me now. Even with the marks of a previous life still on yeah. us, we can go into his presence as if he had never thank you, Yeah, thank you. Praise God. This will yeah. change how you view yourself. Right. There's an awful lot of I, I don't understand it. Can I just can I just talk to you for a minute? Esteem issues. Esteem issues. How is it that Satan has convinced the church, he's convinced the men of the church that you're not worthy? And he's convinced the women of the church you're not worthy. And here's the blood of Jesus saying, you're not worthy. Yeah. You don't Amen. need, listen to me, church, you don't need anyone's approval. Right. Ladies, you don't need a man's approval. Men, you don't need other men's approval. You don't need ladies' approval. Are you listening? You don't need anyone's approval. God has already stamped his qualifying mark on you. He's already sealed you with his Holy Ghost. You're already more than a conqueror in the eyes of God. And the question is, will you choose to step up and take your place? Not caring... Right. What other people think about you. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. You know, those shoes really do not go with that dress. Yeah. And, that, yeah. and that hair, my God. <laughs> we get so caught up on the superficiality. Yeah. 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 <laughs> and listen to me, it's on both sides. You're not worthy. You're not good enough. Liar! You'll never amount to anything. Liar! I am a success. Going somewhere to happen. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. He is a covenant-keeping God. Every human, the Bible says here in Hebrews chapter 9 and verse 27, every human being is appointed to die once and then face God's judgment. Right. But when we die, we will be face to face with Christ, Amen. the one who experienced death for all of us. Right. Aren't you glad Amen. that you don't have to answer to God? Yeah. What? Amen. Jesus took the hit. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. God, God, listen to me, church. God does not abide sin. Right. Well, you know, God accepts me just as I am. I just got through preaching to you. God loves you so much he refuses to leave you in the condition that he right. found you in. Yeah. Yeah. He's expecting us to change. He's expecting right. us to start putting away the sin that used right. to so easily beset us. Right. Yeah. He's expecting us to. Why? Because he's redeemed us. Yeah. <laughs> right? Jesus has shed his blood. Well, God understands where I'm coming from. No, he doesn't. He's never been tempted to sin. <laughs> well, God understands it. No, he doesn't. Matter of fact, he doesn't understand sin so much. He sent his son That's right. as a man to experience sin, to be tempted, be tempted. just like we are, yeah, yeah. except not to sin. I said not to sin. That's what makes the life of Jesus so remarkable, is that he was tempted just like you, just like me. To sin. Yeah, never sin. Did, did you see that in Luke's gospel? Mm -hmm. Right? The, the Bible says that the Spirit led him out into the wilderness yeah, yeah. where he was tempted. tempted. Yeah. What does that mean? It means he was really hungry 
And he was really tempted to turn those rocks in his, in, come on, yeah, into yeah. bread. He was tempted. Why? Because he was hungry. Mm -hmm. He was really tempted. I said, it has to be real. The Bible doesn't lie. It had to be a real temptation. Right. 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 Dallas says, oh, you're going to quote scripture? This is what he does to the church. Oh, you're going to start quoting scripture? Okay, here we go. Scripture quoting contest. Let's go up to the highest pinnacle. And the Bible says, throw yourself off because the Lord will give his angels charge over you concerning you and you won't dash your foot on a stone up. Jesus was tempted to do it. Really tempted. Really. Otherwise, are you, are you with me? Right. He was really tempted right. the same way you and I are. Except he didn't do it. Right. Amen. 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 And that's what makes him worthy. Right. He says, by his own example, you too can overcome temptation. Amen. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. I've been around folks. Yeah. Stand your feet, everybody. Pray. God has changed your name.